guys, welcome back to Fusion YGO. Today we're going to go through Memory Lane and why we rebranded from our original name, five points in the comment section if you can name what it is, to Fusion YGO. When I was a kid, and I use that kind of loosely, I'm an older player now, Fusion Summoning was huge. Black Skull Dragon, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Dark Paladin, Gaia the Dragon Champion, everybody had a favorite. Everybody had the monster that called to them, and for me, it was none of those. It was Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast. So when Chimera got a retrain, just like Fusion YGO did after many years, what I decided to do was I needed to build it. So I went ahead and I built the most recent competitive version of Chimera for your viewing pleasure. And before we dive into the video, I just want to know, what's your favorite Fusion monster? Leave it down below. And with that, lads, let's get into the deck profile for Chimera Fiendsmith. Enjoy. All right, lads, let's go ahead and dive right into it. But before we do, don't forget to join the Discord server. Link is in the description below, as well as making sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Does it cost you anything? And it's, well, it helps me. So let's go ahead and dive right into this Chimera list. So we're gonna start things off with three copies of Gazelle, the uh, King of Mythical Claws. Uh, it will search either a level five Fiend or Chimera Fusion. It is Typically your best normal summon. Uh, there is an additional normal summon that's in the deck that you sometimes utilize, but this is the most common one. We have three copies of Nightmare Apprentice. Uh, Nightmare Apprentice, you'll discard a card to summon itself, and then on normal or special summon, you get to search an illusion monster from your deck to your hand. That can come in clutch with certain lines of play within the deck and cards and savings. And it's a level six, that matters. Uh, we're playing three copies of Cornfield Codal. So on discard, you're able to search a card that mentions Chimera Fusion except itself. And it uh, also in the graveyard or on the field can banish itself to negate a targeting effect as long as you control a card named Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, which you have four monsters that meet that material in the extra deck. We'll get to it. Three copies of Mirror Sword Knight. Mirror Sword Knight is the other normal summon. Uh, you contribute this card as a quick effect to summon a, a monster that no, uh, mentions Chimera Fusion. Typically it'll be Gazelle, but there's another card. Uh, it's the next card actually, it's Big Wing Burfament. And then while you control Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast from the field or graveyard, you can banish it to negate a monster effect. Uh, pretty strong. Big Wing Burfament. Uh, on summon you can add uh, a level four beast and or Chimera Fusion from the deck to your hand. Gazelle has another effect and so does uh, Big Wing. When they're used as fusion material, Gazelle will let you add an illusion monster from your deck to your hand, and Big Wing will let you summon a illusion monster from your graveyard to your side of the field. Uh, really, really strong. The last card is a Diabells, uh, the original Sin Keeper. Uh, this just forces your opponent to set things, so if you're playing against certain matchups, uh, you can just pop cards. So if your opponent sets a card, let's say they're playing the Azamina stuff, you can actually pop Deception. If they're, not, if they're playing Hallowed, which is pretty common, that outs it, but if they're playing uh, debtors, then you know, you have your it's harder to play around it because debtors they have to set, and then once they set it, they can't activate it that turn, so it turns off quick play spells, which is really strong against things like runic, um, but it's also really strong against uh, the sinful spoil stuff as well, being able to turn off wanted and all that stuff, they have to set it and once they set it, they can't activate it right away so they have to do it before you summon this and lastly, is only two copies of Chimera Fusion. It recycles itself, and we play another really interesting fusion card in here, so it is very rare that three comes up. That does it for the Chimera package. It's pretty large. Next is the Fiendsmith package. We're playing two Engraver, one Lacrima, one Lurry, and one Tract. And to supplement with this, because this is a specifically a fusion-based deck, we are actually playing an evil hero package of Sinister Necrom, a Dusted Gold, and Dark Fusion. So why Dark Fusion? I chose Dark Fusion, not as a joke, but as a supplement to Chimera Fusion because you can summon the main monsters of the, de of the extra deck with this card, and a Dusted Gold is now no longer a card that you brick on. So you can discard it like to be able to search this, and it gets the Light Fiend from your hand into your graveyard, and you get a Fusion card, which can come in clutch. And Sinister Necrom, funny enough, is a level five Fiend. So you can search it off of Gazelle, which is pretty funny. 
but the Feedsmith package is pretty self-explanatory. It's a little larger than most people, but I like the Lacrima because it could put double engraver engrave, which I think is really strong. Next up is the supplemental engine. So we're playing the Fright for Patchwork engine, but I run it at 222. Um, I have never needed more than two of each. Edge of Chain is solid, but the whole point is it's a fiend and it's searchable and you can just dig through a lot of your deck, which is really good, especially in a deck, in a game where like you need to dig out stuff or you want to be able to make sure you have no dead draws, this kind of supplements it. And Polly being always available gives you five fusion cards in the main deck, which is really, really the perfect number. Uh, continuing on those, we have one Diabolica and one King Tiger. King Tiger, so we have an additional beast in deck, but it also is pretty good against certain matchups. Um, it's not as strong against things like Tempai, but it is really good against uh, some of the decks like Ubel, where they just don't get to keep bodies on the field. Uh, it's really strong. And then Diabolica lets you re-add things to your hand. So you can add Engraver to just continue going off, or you can add Lacrima for follow-up, or you can add Big Wing to allow you to get the Fusion Summon effect off of it so you can get your Diabels on the field. There's a lot of ways to use this card effectively. And then King Tiger, like I said, is just a beast. A Diabolica also will summon itself back if Fiend is sent to the graveyard by card effect. Now for the going second cards. Uh, this deck is 47 cards. Uh, it's pretty thick, but I like the way it works. So I got three copies of Ash, three copies of Imperm, three copies of Droplet, three copies of Book of Eclipse, two Triple Tactics Talent, one called by the grave. These just allow you to go second to break boards. Called by is, and the talents are more for going first, but they can work going second. Uh, but these cards are all designed specifically to go second because Book of Eclipse doesn't matter. You fusion summon. Forbidden Droplet doesn't matter because you have so many quick play spells that you're able to just send them. Um, Imperm and Ash are there to be able to allow you to interrupt your opponent. That does it for the main. So let's go ahead and do the extra deck now. We're playing two copies of uh, Burfamet, the Mythical King of Phantom Beasts. On summon, it dumps a fiend from your deck to your graveyard. Really good. And while it's in the graveyard, you can special summon a beast, illusion, or fiend monster that is banished by banishing itself. One of the things you can loop is like Diabolica. Another card that you can loop with this is Diabells, which is really good, especially if you're playing into Bestials. And it's a level six fiend, which is really nice. We are playing one copy of Chimera. Uh, there are times where this comes up, specifically when you're playing through like two, two Omni Negates or two Spell Negates, and you want to be able to go Poly, Chain Chimera Fusion, Chain Forbidden Droplet, for example, uh, is a line I have done. And you summon both of them, and then it these guys all count as Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, is what they become, uh, which turns on your Cornfield Codal and your Mirror Sword Knight. It also allows you to re-add, because it does it while on Field or in Graveyard, to add Chimera Fusion back, which is really good. Uh, and then Chimera also will let you summon from Grave by Banishing, itself from the grave and will rip a card at random out of your opponent's hand. Uh, we are also playing Chimera, the Illusion Beast. This is your OTK machine. I don't summon it a lot, but when it does come up, it comes in clutch. Uh, for the Fiendsmith package, we are playing the Princess. Necroquip Princess is really good. Area Leader is also really insane because you can dump things like Diabolica to re-add a Fiend and then you can discard, like let's say it's Engraver, you can use Engraver, summon the Diabolica back, and then you just continue going. Uh, we are also playing Magnum the Reliever and Desiree. It's real easy to make Desiree in this deck. Uh, Magnum the Reliever is also really strong just for popping cards, recycling polys, things like that. So if like you open a poly, you can turn your second Fright for Patchwork back on with this card, and then Feedsmith Desiree is really strong for the multiple interruptions. Uh, the last fusion monster is Guardian Chimera, and then for the Fiendsmith package, we are running the Requiem, and the sequence, you will cycle through them a lot. We're also playing Muckcracker and SP. Uh, Muckcracker is there as kind of like a linchpin. You could also, I'm thinking about it, uh, this card and uh, Evolzar Lars are cards that I'm thinking about cutting for Cross Sheep. Cross Sheep is a beast that you can summon from the extra deck. I almost never go into Lars, uh, so this might become a Cross Sheep for me. Uh, but the last card is Wave Hiking Caesar. That does it for the extra. Let's do the side deck. I don't normally do this, but when I say it's competitive, it's competitive. Uh, the only card I'm thinking about signing out is uh, cutting out, and I'll tell you exactly what it's for here, here in a minute. Uh, three copies of Nib, three copies of Droll, three copies of Ogre, and then one Feather Duster, two Lightning Storm. The last three cards are Dark Rulers, but I'm thinking about cutting them out uh, for Cross Out Designators, and then I might cut Lightning Storm for D Barrier, just in case. Um, so. Those are kind of my thoughts, are these five cards might become crossouts and uh, D barriers, and that just gives me more ways to play going first. But that does it for the deck profile. 
I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And until next time, lads, good fun, have luck.